Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to look at how we can add filtering to a hot chocolate GraphQL API. So you'll notice over here on the left hand side, I have a basic hot chocolate GraphQL API. We have an application DB context, which contains a table for authors and a table for books. You can see we have our author entity and our book entity with a relationship defined as one author being able to have multiple books and each book having a single author, a one-to-many relationship there between authors and books. You'll notice we also have a migrations folder which contains our entity framework migrations to create the database schema for us. Inside the app settings.development.json, I have a connection string pointing to my localhost Postgres database that I am running inside a Docker container for the purposes of this sample. Again, feel free to replace the Postgres database with a database of your choice in your project. You'll notice I also have a mutation class which contains a mutation to add an author and also add a book. We also have a query class which contains a query to get authors and a query to get books, returning authors and books from the application DB context, in turn from the underlying database. And then last but not least, inside our program startup, you can see we're adding our application DB context. We're then adding our GraphQL server adding our mutation and query type. We're also registering the application DB context to integrate it with GraphQL. And you'll notice between app.mapgraphql and app.run, we are migrating the database and we're also seeding the database with authors and books if none exist. So that will give us some data that we'll be able to play around with for the purposes of this sample. So what we are going to want to do, first of all, is ensure that we have the hot chocolate data NuGet package. So what I'm going to do is right click API, manage NuGet packages, and you'll see I have the hot chocolate data entity framework package. And if we look at the dependencies for that NuGet package, you can see it automatically depends on the hot chocolate dot data NuGet package. So that means that we don't need to explicitly install the hot chocolate.data package if we don't want to. So what we are going to do now is add filtering into the startup configuration for our GraphQL server. So what we're going to do where we've got builder.services.addGraphQL server, we're going to add another line in here and we're going to say add filtering. And this will set up uh, filtering within our GraphQL server. And now what we are going to do is we're going to open up our authors query and our books query, and we are going to add the use filtering attribute. So what I'm going to do is go on ahead and add that attribute to both of those two methods like so. So we have the use filtering attribute on both the get authors method and the get books method inside our query class. And out of the box, that's all that you need to do to configure filtering in the GraphQL server. So now let's take a look and see that in action. What I'm going to do is build and run the GraphQL API. Give that just a few moments to spin up. And if I now open up the browser, I have a banana cake pop at the slash GraphQL endpoint. If I then create a document and apply the defaults, what I'm going to do is create a new query and I'm going to query for books and I'm going to return the title like so. If I now run that query, you can see that we get our nine books back there that we used to seed the database with. However, now we can explore the filtering options that we have available on this books query. So what we can do is we can add some brackets after books and you'll notice we now have this where parameter. So what we can do is we can specify where like so and we can specify 
that we want to return all books where the author is John Skeet, for example. So what we do is we say where, and then we will say author, and then we will say name, and then EQ, short for equals, and then we can say John Skeet, like so. Just tidy that up, and if I now run that, you can see that we get C Sharp in depth, which is the only book in our database by the author John Skeet. So that's showing you how you can use the filter to filter for just a single property, in this case, the name of the author of the book. However, what if you wanted to return books by multiple authors? In this case, we're just filtering on the one author, John Skeet. So what you can do is we can replace this inner uh, equals condition and we can say in. And you'll notice this is an array of type string. And what we can do in here is we can then specify John Skeet. And I'm also going to then specify Jamie Chan, like so. If we now run that query, you can see that we get back C sharp in depth by John Skeet and also learn C Sharp in one day and learn it well by Jamie Chan. So that shows you how you can essentially filter on multiple authors by using the in parameter instead of the equals parameter. Now what we're going to do is get a little bit more complicated and use the or parameter. So at the moment this is a single filter condition, but what we're going to do now is convert this into two filter conditions using the OR operator. So what we do is we will replace what we've got in there currently. And then what we're going to do is instead of specifying author, you'll notice that we have this OR parameter. So we can specify OR, and that is an array of uh, filter types, filter inputs, if you like. So what we're going to do is we're going to define the first uh, filter and we're going to say author, and then within there, we're going to say name, and then within name, we're going to say equals and John Skeet, like so. And then at the end of that object, but just before we close the array, we're going to add another filter input, and this is going to be our second or operand. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to say title, and this is going to be the title of the book. So in this case, I am going to say uh, equals, like so. And then I'm going to say head first C sharp. And if we now run that query, you can see that we get back the book C sharp in depth, authored by John Skeet. And we also get back the book head first C sharp because that's our title filter there with the title equaling head first C sharp. So that's how you can use the OR filter in GraphQL. Essentially you specify where, then OR, and then you specify an array of operands. So in this case, we're filtering on either the author name equal to John Skeet, or the title of the book being equal to head first C sharp. And each of these are simply specified as items within the array, each of those items being an operand for our OR operation. So that's how you can essentially use the out of the box filtering that's available in a hot chocolate GraphQL API. But now what we're going to do is we're going to customize those filter types to fit our particular needs. So what I'm going to do is go back into our solution and I am going to create a new class. And this class is going to be a book filter type, like so. And this is going to extend filter input type and it's going to be of type book, since this is our book filter type. Next up, we're going to want to override the configure method. So I'll do that like so, and you'll see that it provides us with a descriptor. And we can use this descriptor to customize the book filter type. So what we can do, for example, is we can say descriptor.field, 
and this will give us a lambda that we can then say book dot in this case title and then we'll say dot ignore at the end and essentially what that is telling GraphQL to do is it's telling GraphQL to ignore the title field for the book filter input. Last but not least, to wire this up to our query, if we come back to our query and where we have the use filtering attribute on our get books method, we're simply going to add in the type book filter type, like so. And that will essentially tell GraphQL to use the book filter type for the filtering options on this books query. So what we do is we will now rerun that API to take account of the changes. And if we now come back over here into Banana Cake Pop, and if we then reload the schema, you'll notice that we now have a red squiggle underneath title. And that's because title no longer exists as a filter input option in our schema. If we can confirm this, if we come to the schema reference tab and click on the book filter input, you'll notice we have both and and or. We have the author and author ID, and we also have the ID, but notice we no longer have the title field. And that's because we set it up as uh, with the ignore option in that custom book filter type. So what we can do now is further customize uh, that book filter type by explicitly specifying the operations that are available on the title field. So if we go back into the solution and where we have our book filter type, we're going to want to create a, another class. This class is going to be called book title operation filter input type, like so. And this is going to extend the class string operation filter input type. We are then going to override the configure method, much like we did with our book filter type. We're going to say descriptor dot operation, and then we're going to say default filter operations dot equals, and then the type is going to be string type, like so. And essentially what this is telling GraphQL to do is it's going to tell GraphQL to configure the equals uh, filter operation for our book title. However, it's not going to set up any of the other filter operations. If we just get rid of that equals and use autocomplete, you can see we have uh, operations such as equals, all, and, in, any, amongst others. By simply just specifying equals, that means that it would only set up this book title operation filter to have an equals filter operation. Feel free to play around with adding in other operations, chopping and changing the different operations here to customize the uh, requirements to fit your needs. So to wire this up, if we go back to our book filter type and where we have our ignore uh, chained method call, we're going to replace that with type, and then we're going to say book title operation filter input type. And that sets up the title property on the book class to use the book title operation filter input type. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop and rerun the API once again, give it a few moments just to build the project and spin it up for us. If we then come back into Banana Cake Pop, and if we reload the schema again, you'll notice that title no longer has the red squeal because we're no longer ignoring that field. And we have our equals operation like so. If we were to get rid of that equals and autocomplete, you can see that we simply have and, or, and equals we don't have any of the other operations such as in, contains, any, etc. We just have equals, and that's because equals is the only filter operation that we specified in our book title operation filter input type. 
So that's essentially shown you how you can set up the out of the box filtering in a hot chocolate GraphQL API. We've also then uh, gone through setting up a custom filter type for our book uh, type, specifying first of all to ignore the title field, which means it's not available for use in the GraphQL API. We've then replaced that ignore method call with our type uh, method call with the book title operation filter input type and that allows us uh, to have fine-grained control over the different filter operations that are available on a particular field. In this case we specify that you can only perform the equals operation on the books title field. So I hope you found this video useful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.